My name is Maria Shepard. Data Decision Group is a company that uh, I founded um, and we do strategic market research. We do uh, traditional market research all in the healthcare space. We don't do uh, anything but healthcare. We're, we're experts in, the, in that space. We, do, we provide marketing services for s small startup companies in general and we also do usability testing for human factors engineering. My background, um, starting from my most recent position in industry, was I was a director of marketing for Philips Medical. Prior to that, I was a vice president of marketing for Iridian Medical, a small medical device company. Before that, I was with Boston Scientific in multiple medical specialties, and with CR Bard, um, also in multiple medical specialties. Yes, human factors engineering is a science um, that uh, is used for in almost every area of product development. But in medical devices, and it takes on a very special meaning uh, because usability testing has a lot to do with, with the, safety, uh, safety, the safety of devices and, and reducing risk in using devices for the people who use them. Now those could be clinicians, uh, they could be um, patients who are using home health devices, caregivers at home, or family. So um, usability testing is what ensures that human factors engineering is as successful as it's supposed to be. Human factors testing is used in many areas of product development, but in medical devices it, it takes on a more critical role and it is mandated by the FDA now. The guidance document is HE75 and human factors engineering it is used in medical devices in order to be able to improve the safety and the efficacy of, of devices and that's why it's mandated. Usability testing is a component of um, human factors engineering and, and my company provides usability testing. We're usability testing experts, we are not human factors engineering experts and the goal again is to make the device as safe and efficacious as possible. Not yet, I don't think, and, and that probably isn't the popular response. Um, many of my clients uh, are still unsure about the implementation of usability testing. Human factors engineering is a science. There are people who have PhDs in it, and those people are, are slowly moving into R&D positions at medical device companies. But the usability testing component is still challenging because it, um, it, it requires uh, that the designer of the products understands what environments they're used in, what what are the number of users and um, and that they ha are able to provide um, a testing that shows that they've done everything that they can to reduce or mitigate risk in the product. Labeling is, is a, a critical component of usability testing because it's labeling that um, provides the direction that is needed for uh, the end user to use the device and so Usability testing, the information that's gained from usability testing, the data that is gained from it, is, is ultimately integrated into the labeling. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation here um, about um, usability testing, and um, I'll, I'll do a quick review on, on labeling. Um, there's really four takeaways in terms of the mandates for labeling um, that are in HE75, and there are other guidance documents that are also required. But um, labeling, number one, the first takeaway is that labeling should be the last resort for protecting users from potential r risks. Now this doesn't mean that labeling isn't an important component, but labeling, what FDA and um, Wants, what FDA wants to see is that good human factors engineering is engineered into the device and that labeling is, is uh, an information source among many others. The second takeaway is that HE75, the guidance from this document, and it's about 465 pages, it's very, very detailed, um, it, it does not supersede any of the guidance that comes from uh, the FDA, the FCC, um, uh, the European community or um, the IEC. The third uh, takeaway is that all markings and, and, and labeling should undergo usability testing with typical users of the device. So you actually test the labeling and test markings on um, uh, users in order to make sure that they comprehend what's needed. And then finally, clarity, consistency, and brevity of label information 
is considered critical by the FDA and is, and is spelled out quite clearly in the HE75 document. So this is a, a, a component of HE75, and, and I, I'm sure that anybody who's watching this can request this, this PowerPoint presentation uh, from Foreign Exchange. But HE75 marketing and labeling basic design elements are, um, are um, that the user should be able to detect the label, read the label, comprehend the label, then decide what to do and comply with what it says on the labeling. So that's why uh, labeling and, and language translations are so critical because you need to be able to do this in any country where the product is marketed. Well, there are also four takeaways for language in translation. Um, translation should always be done, and it says this very clearly in HE75, uh, by experienced medical translators and editors. Professionally translated materials should be reviewed by an in-country expert who meets two requirements. They know the target market and they understand the intended use of the device. Prioritized translation is sometimes necessary. Sometimes translation, translating the in, uh, entire document um, from English or from whatever language um, is the primary language um, is unrealistic. It would just be too long and nobody would ever read it. Um, so prioritizing um, translation is acceptable, but there does have to be a strategy put in place by the company um, and, and, and a, um, it does need to be rank ordered in terms of uh, what priorities should be used for translation. And then clarity, consistency, and brevity of label information are critical even in the translated documents. So, so that's where the expertise of professional translators and in-country experts is necessary. There are so many changes com coming. Uh, healthcare reform is changing um, everything about the way medical companies, device, pharma, and biotech are, are operating because our whole environment is changing. But also, um, strategies are changing. Uh, companies are going to Europe um, as a first-line strategy instead of as a, uh, a backup strategy or, or a, um, a, a, you know, a second or third year part of their strategy because getting products launched in, in the European market and also in other countries um, is, is, is not as challenging as going through the regulatory process um, with the FDA in the United States. So, so labeling will become more critical, translations will become more critical, and, 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 um, and all of the work that's needed to be done in order to get all the, that done in terms of usability testing will need to be performed in the countries where products are targeted for launch.